I don't know whether to be angry or impressed. Imagine getting up, getting ready, heading out the door, noticing your car is missing. What do you do? You file a report with the police, you Uber to work, morning ruined. So you come home from work and your car is back in its spot. In the car is a note from this woman saying her son was super sick and that she needed the car to take him to the hospital and noticed the keys were in it. So she helped herself and in return, she felt bad, left two tickets to the Dodger game inside the car and says, you know what, I'm sorry. I mean, there's no damage to the car. The car is returned, what do you do? You go to the game. So you get back from the game and you enter your home and it is completely empty. This woman takes copies of the house keys that were attached to the car keys, knowing damn well you chose to go to the game and robs your freaking home. <laughs> brilliant. I mean, absolutely brilliant. So this couple comes in together to buy an engagement ring and they had a budget of about $20,000, which is a lot for an engagement ring. But the ring that she happened to pick out was about $35,000, which is a lot of money and she was really adamant about picking it and he was kind of reserved like you know it is a lot of money but she's like no if you love me you'll buy it yada 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 and he's like you know what you're gonna be my wife the mother of my kids whatever makes you happy so after they finally decide i pack it up for them I'm like here you go have a great marriage have a great life goodbye about three weeks later the fiance comes in and i'm thinking she just wants to get the ring size or something and she's like can you guys take out the diamond and replace it with a cubic zirconium Cubic zirconium is a very cheap substitute for a diamond. So I was like, uh, yeah, we can do that, but just give us two or three days. So she leaves and I call her fiance because I was like, oh, this is really suspicious. And he had no idea that she came into the shop or that she was coming in. So he calls me two days later and he finds out that she was going to break up with him. She would have kept that diamond and she would have given him the fake one. He would have returned it and he would have gotten no money back. Talk about mess. So tell me why I tutor high school students via Zoom. And Amber Alert started going off on everyone's phones. And I started to tell students how one of my biggest fears is to be kidnapped. And I've been followed on two different occasions. So it's a valid fear and it's a valid fear for anyone. And one of my students looked at me and had the audacity to say, Miss, you're pretty, but not pretty enough to be kidnapped. I started laughing so hard because you know what? In that moment, I knew I was not in my element. I was not in my element. I felt very, very ugly. I was like, okay, all right, fine. If anything, it's just reassurance. It's just reassurance. And so I went to go tell my mom what my student said. And my mom, instead of being like, oh, no, Gabby, you're beautiful, blah, 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 blah. No. She looked at me and she said, well, you don't have to be pretty to be kidnapped. Ah! One day my mom grounded me, which means I didn't have my phone, so I didn't have an alarm clock, so I overslept for school the next day. My brother drives me to school, and since I didn't have a phone, I didn't know that there was no school because of a snowstorm. Me and my brothers, both being dumbasses, don't see that there's no cars in the parking lot, so my brother drops me off and speeds away. I'm knocking on the door for like 20 minutes waiting for them to let me in. Nobody opens the door, bro. I'm like, is there no school today? Boom, it starts to snow, and I'm like, oh fuck, I'm wearing ripped jeans with no jacket. I'm like, oh shit. What do we do now? I live like 15 minutes driving from the school. So I'm walking around looking if I can use somebody's phone. I knock on this lady's door. She opens up and I'm like, ma'am, can I please use your phone? I think she had dementia because she starts screaming at me. She's like, no, no, slams the door in my face. I finally find an angel like two streets down. And she's like, oh, of course, princess, come inside. And in my mind, I'm like, I've seen the horror movies. Thank you, ma'am, but I'm just going to stay outside. I call my mom to pick me up. And she's like, pick you up from where? I'm like, I don't know. I've been walking for two hours, bro. When I was 16 years old, my dad almost shot me. Here's the story. It was the last summer night before junior year, so naturally, I was at a friend's house partying. I told my dad that I was at my best friend's house. I wasn't. But I was actually at my friend's house with my friend group. They ran out of alcohol, and the only person who had alcohol was me. In my room at home. My dad is a very light sleeper, and he's also kind of strict. So it took them about an hour to convince me to drive all the way back to my house, sneak in my house, and steal my alcohol, and leave. I say sneak in because I wouldn't want to wake up my dad and then have him question me why I'm home, and then look through my bag. Four of my friends and I got in my car and we drove to my house. We parked outside my house with no headlights on, no nothing. My friend Zach and I went to the back of my house to sneak into the window that is always open. And the rest of my friends stayed in the car. The problem with the window is that it's super squeaky. We sat there trying to open the window for five minutes, very slowly, so it wouldn't make any noise. So we finally get the window halfway open so that I can fit my body through it. Half of my body is out the window and the other half is swung over into my family room. I am so close to getting inside and then my dad wakes up and I hear, Who's there? Followed by a, <laughs> Life for part two. Okay, here's part two of me almost getting shot. So once I heard the, I was like, shit. 
My initial reaction was just, just to forget everything, jump out the window and run. My friend Zach, who was with me, is literally a national track star. So he starts running too, but he's running at like 50 miles an hour and I'm running at like two miles an hour. And we just jump in my car. We are scared out of our minds and we tell my friends what just happened, but then one of my friends is missing from my car. He really needed to pee and we parked outside my neighbor's house, who is an FBI agent, and took a piss on his tree. But that's beside the point. Once I was sitting in the car, I started actually thinking. And I was like, oh my god, I left the window open. Yes, he didn't catch me, but the window was still open. So I was like, I have no other option but to go fix this. So I run up to my house and I go through my garage door. My garage door makes a lot of noise, so that's really good. And I know my dad's awake with a gun and everything. And so I yell out, I'm like, dad? Pretending like I don't know what's going on. And he goes, Maddie, oh my god, I almost shot you in the face. And I was just like, I have no idea what you're talking about, dad. <laughs> like for part three. Part three of me almost getting shot in the face. So I played it off really well, and my dad was also in that sleepy mind, so he wasn't really thinking straight. So I guess that all the noises that I made previously from the window, he just thought that they were normal noises that I was making in the kitchen or something. And I was just like, Dad, what are you doing? While he's still holding the gun. And naturally, he was like, what are you doing home? And I was like, oh, I forgot my medication. Can't live without that. And he just believed me, and I went upstairs and grabbed everything. He was just so tired, he didn't even think to check my bag or anything. Lucky for me, because there was a lot of stuff in there. I said goodnight, and I waited for him to go into his room. And then I just slammed the window shut. He literally never knew. I run to my car, get in the car with my friends, we go back to his house, and we have a fun night. I go home the next morning, and then he's like, what was wrong with you last night? Were you on drugs or something? Personally, I don't do drugs. I also actually don't drink. But he still asked me if I was high or on something the night before because I was acting really weird because I was really nervous. To recap, yes, I was very nervous because my dad was holding a gun right in front of my face. And that is the story of how my dad almost shot me. So this is probably my favorite story about my cheating ex. As many stories as I have on him, this one happened after we were broken up. He had left me for a girl that he was seeing on the side and we hadn't spoken in months. We had both blocked each other on pretty much everything. But as most girls do, I do have my fake Instagram account and he seemed pretty happy in his new relationship. I believed that until I got a DM from a girl. She sent me screenshots of messages and fake accounts that he had made to communicate to her. So he had literally been cheating on the girl that he was with now with her the whole time. I literally don't understand people sometimes. Both him and I were in the same friend group, mostly because we pretty much grew up together. So I talked to another member of the group about what we should do. Now I believe in karma and that people get what they deserve, but who's to say that I'm not karma? So we decided to show up to his house with not only the girl he was cheating with, but all the girls he cheated on me with. And take care of this, I kid you not, game show style. Follow, share, interact, and I'll do a part two.